Lack of business skills has been identified as a major challenge to the uptake and growth of entrepreneurship as a means of job creation among the youth in Kenya. Many young Kenyans, even those who have acquired higher education, are not equipped with practical skills of managing a business. This has led to many startups failing at inception, discouraging the budding entrepreneurs and keeping many others off this path. My name is Martin Mwago, this is Kiambu County in Gidurai. I am a vet by profession. Uh, the problem is that even starting my own business has been a problem because of the money. So you don't have these people who can train us. Uh, I would like to start a business, but the problem is that I don't have capital. I don't have anyone who can mentor me to start a business. And I don't have any money in my account that I can start my own business. Kwangu Mimi, Nimekuwa ngumu kuanzisha biashara because nimekosa capital na pia vitu vitu mob kama discouragement unapata ile business unapo una idea unapata mtu ameshaeka size kupata mtu mwenye anaweza kupea idea biashara kama vijana size huwezi pata labda sasa serikali ingilie I tried my avocado business so I didn't I didn't have enough capital had I found one to mentor me so my business suddenly collapsed because if I had I, if I had some capital or someone who would mentor me, who would teach me how to keep my businesses records, I think my business would would not have failed. I've been in former employment for about three four years. Then I left. There was no satisfaction in that. I had to pursue this thing that I wanted to start a garage of myself. You have skills, but problem is you cannot start something up. You have to register your company with the government to get tenders from the government, but that's a big problem. You need cash to register your business, and also it's a big, big problem, guys. The Student Training for Entrepreneurial Promotion, STEP, was introduced to address this challenge by training youth in the basics of entrepreneurship. Developed by Germany's Lufana University, it was introduced at the Kenyatta University through a partnership involving the German and the Kenyan National Commissions for UNESCO. With the support of UNESCO Regional Office for East Africa, national and county governments, STEP is now equipping out-of-school youth in several counties with business skills. We started in uh, Kenyatta University, STEP in Kenyatta University, and uh, a number of students uh, were trained. We trained students uh, between 2012 to, I think, 2014, uh, over about 600 students actually went through the, the program and uh, of course again looking at the, the problem of youth unemployment youth out of school and also seeing the success of step uh, at the university because we were targeting the students who are almost graduating so that they can go out there and, and start their own businesses so we designed actually to roll out a uh, step to the youth out of school and we call this step for you. Uh, using a similar curriculum but of course focusing uh, on the, uh, the youth out of school. So we were able to partner to begin with uh, the, the government of the Kiambu County and then we also rounded it from Kiambu, we went to Mombasa and then Kisumu and I think Nakuru, Nakuru also. Uh, Nakuru County. It's a 12 module course, um, but the 12 modules are divided or classified into three sections. We have modules that address psychology. It is about the mind because with the entrepreneurship we have to be in the right mindset. All the worries that come around with, with the business, okay? Who are the business partners and how do I organize my business? So there's a psychology aspect. We have modules that address management, like bookkeeping, the, the management aspect of the business, um, how to keep your paperwork well, how to receipt and make your communication. And uh, we, we also have modules that are entrepreneurship related. These are those which address issues such as starting a business, um, finding starting capital, and stuff like that. So we have those three. And the three together feed each other very well. Uh, so that uh, at the end of the day, the trainee is able to embark into the business, okay, fully, fully molded, okay. The mind, 
the, the administration part of it and the, and the entrepreneurial aspect. Welcome to Tester Free Company Limited. My name is Anzazi Kiti, the Managing Director. We deal with spices and natural food seasoning. We grind them, we crush them, we cook them and pack them. So we do all the manufacturing processes. Anzazi was among the very first students of STEP while she was studying at Kenyatta University in 2012. After university, Anzazi worked for a top audit firm but quit after two years to found a tester freak company. It has recorded tremendous growth. So at the moment we also stock in different outlets, around 21 outlets, uh, with our major, major outlets being all the Chandarana Food Plus supermarkets. And uh, since recently we got East Mart supermarket. So we have Chandarana that has 10, 10 branches or outlets and East Mart that has seven branches. And then we have salespeople in Mombasa, Kwale, Kilifi, in Kericho, in, even in some towns in, in Nairobi. Although Anzazi holds a master's degree and is a certified public accountant, the practical approach to step training made all the difference to her business management skills. Bookkeeping can be more theoretical, but through STEP it was more practical that everything that you go through in a business needs to be documented. So you have to doc document every unit, every shilling, everything actually that goes through the business needs to be documented. So through bookkeeping and uh, marketing, they also taught us some skills in marketing and going out there. So, but where I did, where I got most most uh, most input was in the bookkeeping process because they enable they told us you don't really have to have system to put your books right, so you can put your books in any way as long as you you write the, them down and make them clear. When Vincent Korir finished high school, he spent a number of years as a farmhand and doing odd jobs in his home village of Ogilge in Akuru County. In 2016, he heard about Step for Youth training, enrolled, and his life changed. Uh, we've uh, captured a lot. One, we started with uh, uh, maybe uh, business identification, identifying business opportunities. Uh, in that case also, the, uh, we learn about the capital, uh, we learn about the, the marketing, we learn about the uh, uh, overcoming barriers, we learn about the networking, business planning, uh, b uh, managing, uh, market managing of uh, business, bookkeeping, uh, and all sort of uh, dealing with entrepreneurship. Vincent graduated from the STEP training and decided to immerse himself in agribusiness. After his first harvest, he applied the training and benefited from it. Vincent made a profit of 20,000 shillings from his 1.5 acre maize harvest. He now also grows sweet potatoes and kales, which earn him up to 4,000 shillings every month. He employs local youth as farmhands and has become a beacon of hope to them. His most fulfilling achievement out of step was helping his peasant mother to open a small shop serving the neighborhood. This bustling market is in Nakuru town. Irene Wanjiro opened a second-hand clothes business after graduating from the STEP training in 2016. I went to college, I studied catering, so I was hustling, trying to get a job. There were no jobs. Later I got married, so I was raising my kids. After that, I started again searching for jobs. There were no jobs at all. And when she enrolled for the STEP training in Nakuru County, Okay, it had helped me because, you know, I was staying at home. I didn't have the idea that I can start my own business. I used to rely on job yakwa jidiwa. So when I went to college, that's when I get the idea that I can start my own business. 
What lessons from STEP have you applied to your business? Okay, after going the STEP college, I was able to to know how to to negotiate with my customers, how to market my job. I can now be able to market my job. But again, what I know, I'm not hot tempered. I know how to handle them. At a Gioni, when it's dark, I know how to go and look for my customers outside. I'm not here inside the Kibanda. And how to, to put on Nini the records. Yes, it has helped me a lot. This modest young lady is already a powerhouse at this market. She has used her training from STEP to encourage fellow youths here to start a merry-go-round. With 10 members so far who save 100 shillings per day, paying out 7,000 shillings to one member per week. John Kemani, a step alumni from Kiambu County, has teamed up with four friends to start Qualifarm Zone Limited, rearing pigs and poultry. The 33-year-old and his partners have secured market for their pigs with farmer's choice and also rolled out a brilliant strategy to meet their supply orders. We decided uh, with our, my partners that uh, for us to get a market and to the com uh, commander market, uh, you need a big bunch of which you cannot be able to sustain it here. So what we did, uh, we outsourced farmers. Uh, we give you a, a pig, uh, go and lay the, the pig. When he gives birth, give us two. Keep the, the mother. So you are going to give us the, the two piglets, only that one. So when you are doing the uh, marketing, so you want to sell some, uh, because you are given a, a figure. Let's say you are told, uh, we want 20 pigs. And we have uh, around 10, 15. We are going to the market, to the, those farmers. We pick five from them. Huh? Then uh, it was a, a way of giving back to the society. John has another big story. This is Kumisa Sako, where he sits in the leadership board as one of the founders. The Sako started from humble beginnings by asking the youth to contribute 10 shillings daily into a savings kitty. In this, we started with 10 bob. When uh, we got that confidence from the members, huh? they started to save more than that. Huh? from 50 bob uh, up to 1,000 uh, or more than that. Uh, but the, the mandatory, we have a mandatory deposit that it doesn't have any minimum. Yeah. Now with close to 4,000 members, their loans portfolio is impressive. Uh, right now we are doing around uh, 4 million in a month. Uh, so that's the, the range. So our budget every month Four million. We are doing uh, asset financing where people are buying the motorbikes, the taxis, and the drugs, the clothes. What? So I have uh, some uh, uh, examples. Like these are the motorbikes. Huh? Uh, this is a person who we bought a lad. So the loan is not fully uh, surface. We have this one. This uh, car, uh, it's a taxi, I think uh, it's in Uber, something like that. Huh? We do the asset financing, then we have the normal loans for the self-development. So for that one, we give you uh, three times your savings. Uh, and we are giving the terms of payment. Huh? We, are, we can do the daily payment or the monthly payment. That one is a standard one. Huh? These youth are part of about 600 that have undergone STEP training. Evidently, this entrepreneurship training has the potential for a huge impact in employment creation, industrialization, and economic development. The success of this pilot phase is largely attributed to the partnerships between the implementing institutions, the national, and the county governments. So the idea is to partner more widely and I, I think uh, there is no better place to start that partnership discussion than with the government both at the national and at the county level to the extent that STEP has been uh, running in a number of counties uh, um, over the last uh, few years uh, we believe that um, 
uh, we should be able to sit down with the county uh, governments uh, that we've already worked in um, and, and, and try to get them to take ownership of this and, and, and sell the idea in the, in, the, in the Council of Governors, for instance. The Council of Governors is a big platform that brings together governors from all 47 counties in Kenya. Uh, and if three or four counties that have already gone through this program can demonstrate the impact already that is beginning to have on the youth, and the County of Governors can adopt this, then it becomes a policy at that level uh, for counties to invest resources specifically in youth and partner with UNESCO and our partners to continue to do the trainings. Uh, there is a role definitely for the national government. As you know, uh, there is the Youth Enterprise Development Fund, which has been set up by government, and uh, there are huge funds that have been capitalized and making profits. Uh, we think that they should also be part of that uh, conversation uh, and see how, you know, um, in, through an accreditation process of the program, which again will bring in the Ministry of Education to accredit it as a program that you know the government recognizes uh, and and use that as a sort of a collateral i mean if young people go through the program they get a certification then that can be used to buy for them to get uh, some funds from the youth enterprise development funds so whichever way i think it will be a win-win situation and in the long term what will really happen is that uh, kenya will be using its own resources uh, to support youth development in Kenya as opposed to going to look for those resources outside. I would like to call upon the actually uh, all the other county governments that have not actually had the opportunity to have their youth trained, that they should embrace it. They, they should actually uh, budget for this program because it is good and it's going to help uh, the youth. If um, we mean what we say about the demographic dividend, rather than looking at it negatively uh, in terms of uh, population control, we look at how to enable the population by equipping them with the right level of knowledge, skills and opportunities. I think that's the only way we would really be able to um, consider the demographic growth a dividend. And so therefore, when partners come in to support governments, governments should be brave enough, bold enough, to be able to redirect them to where the, the supply really exists. Because if you really want to grow anything, you have to check the supply. The supply is the population. Now, what is the population equipped with? Are they ready to contribute to social cohesion? to peace, to economic growth. And therefore, if you tap this uh, group of people, give them the right level of education, the right level of training and skills and opportunities, I believe we can transform every country on the continent. Because, you know, I believe that um, when we talk about intelligence, it's not a monopoly of any sector of society. You know, intelligence can be grown. It's about the environment. It's about the opportunities, and this is essentially what this um, pilot has proven. We had not in any way confined it to the university. We went out, and there you have young people who are there waiting, quite brilliant, but lack opportunities, lack the kind of environment that would make it happen. So it, the onus is on government, this, the onus is also on partners to really, you know, walk the talk. Development doesn't just come in the ballroom where you talk about it. Development comes when you test it, when you try it, and you invest in it.